Hello and welcome. This tutorial will show you how to customize a form on your Squarespace website. Let's get started. On your Squarespace dashboard, we'll go to Pages, then select Edit for the page you want to add a form to. In this example, I'll be adding a contact form to my contact page. Select the area you want the form to appear on and select Form. The Settings panel will have three tabs that we will customize, Build, Storage, and Advance. On the Build section, we will first name our form. I suggest to keep the name simple, but make sure it describes what is in reference to. For example, this form will be a general contact form for my website, so I will just go with Contact Page Form. Next, we'll customize the fields on our form. The default form will include a field for name, email, subject, and a message. If you are planning on using these items, you can keep them on there and just select the Edit button to change the field's name and enable or disable whether that field is required. To delete a field, just click on the trash can icon and confirm. If you want to add a specific field, just click on Add Form Field to see all the options available. Squarespace offers quite a few options such as adding a checkbox field, survey questions, email address, website, and plenty more. In this tutorial, I will use the current fields we have and also include a select and checkbox field. Let's start by clicking on select. This field will add a drop down menu where people can select an option. First, add a title to this field. I'm going to use How Did You Hear About Us? You can also add a description within this box if it requires some additional information. Next, we'll enter the options we can use within this section. Each option needs to be on their own line. To make it a required field, meaning that the form can't be submitted without this field filled out, select Required, then select Done. Our next field will be Checkbox. With the Checkbox field, people will be able to select multiple options within that field. Similar to what we did with the Select settings, we'll update the Checkbox settings. When you are done adding new fields, you can then update the order of each field. Hover over the left hand side of the field and drag and drop it in the order you would like. Next, we'll move over to the Storage tab. Here we will select how we want to receive the form fill. The most common way to connect a form on a website would be via email. This means that when someone fills out the form, the info will be sent to you via email so you can easily reply to them. Other options include connecting the form to MailChimp, Google Drive, or using Zapier to connect to other platforms. For any of these options, just select the button and a prompt will open with the steps on how to connect your form for either option. Next, select the Advanced tab. Here you can update the Submit button label and alignment. You can then select what happens when someone submits the form. Here you have the option of creating a page that you want them redirected to. For example, when someone submits the form, they can be redirected to a custom thank you page. To do this, select Click to add URL and select Content and click on the page you want people redirected to. To remove the redirect, just click on the trash can icon. If you prefer to just have a simple message displayed within the same page on your form, then just enter the content within this box. The post submit HTML section offers the same feature as the one above, but you can customize the message a bit more with some HTML. Next is selecting if you want to use a lightbox mode. What this does is replace the form with a button. Once that button is clicked, the form will appear. This can be helpful for long forms. To select, enable Lightbox mode to turn on this feature. Then make sure to include text for the button that would appear to replace the form. For this example, I will disable the Lightbox mode. When you are happy with your settings, select Apply and save your changes. Next, let's customize how the form looks. This portion varies depending if you are using Squarespace 7.0 or Squarespace 7.1. Let's start with Squarespace 7.1 as it's the easier one for making edits. Go to the Design tab in your dashboard and go to Colors, Section Themes, and select the theme that you are using. On the page with the form, click within the form area so that all the form settings appear. You should see the section titled Form Block. Update the colors here. Save your changes and go back. Now let's select Fonts, Assign Styles. Scroll down to the form block. Here you will edit the font size and style for the form.
save your changes and go back. To edit the border and color of the text box, you will have to use a bit of CSS, which you can find within my blog posts. The CSS you see here will do the following. Increase the padding to 14 pixels, add a two pixel border in blush pink, make the field background white, and remove the rounded edges. You can of course swap out the colors and sizes of things. Customize the code to work on your website. To add a border background color to the entire form, you would use this code. You will then copy the CSS snippet. Within Design tab, go to Custom CSS. On the bottom of the text box, add a line break and paste a new code. Make sure to save your changes. To customize your form on Squarespace 7.0, you will have to do it all via CSS. Here's an example of the code to use for the forms field titles, caption, description, and box. To add a border background color to the entire form, you would use this code. You can copy and paste the CSS snippet within my notes. You can add additional settings to the CSS snippet. Things such as swapping out the colors, changing the font style and size, etc. Once you have your CSS code ready, go to Designs, Custom CSS, and paste the code within the text box. Save your changes. Always make sure to test out your contact form. You'll want to make sure all the fields are working the way you had in mind and also that the form fills are arriving to the correct storage option and that the post submit setup is loading correctly. Thank you for watching the Squarespace tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe for more Squarespace how-to videos.